Ever since March of 2022, Russian officials and propaganda have been attacking Ukrainian government. Their attacks defy the laws of common sense and logic. Russian officials have been acting as if... Well, let me explain you in this video. Do you know what the story is about? Obviously, it's about the reasons of Russian propaganda attacks on the Ukrainians. But deep down below, the story is about being a responsible voter and a taxpayer. If you watch this video until the end, you will understand why. About two weeks after Russia attacked Ukraine, Russian propaganda started attacking Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky and his government. They started calling it Kiev's criminal regime. I didn't make a mistake there. They really started their work around mid-March. For two weeks after the first attack, there was propaganda air silence, so to speak. I think Putin, Patrushev and Shoigu, those responsible for making the decision to attack Ukraine, were hoping for Blitzkrieg. To capture Kyiv in days without much resistance, to have Zelensky and his team flee to Poland and install a puppet president who they would use as proxy to rule Ukraine. A very primitive and dumb plan that obviously didn't work out. Zelensky and his team did not run away. He showed an example of courage and patriotism for all Ukrainians. He united the Ukrainians behind him and became a symbol of Ukraine defending against Russian aggression for the entire world. He became a beacon of hope for many. And that really upset Vladimir Putin. Got him mad. Russian propaganda was given an order to personally attack Vladimir Zemlensky at any possibility and tarnish his image as much as possible. And they've been doing it ever since. The attacks are unbelievably, well, <laughs> clumsy and even dumb such as Zelensky and his criminal, unconstitutional Nazi regime is a puppet of the West. Zelensky is taking orders from Washington. Zelensky does not care of regular Ukrainians and is destroying the country. Zelensky obeys American orders and, refu and refuses to negotiate. Zelensky is Nazi and evil. The Ukrainians must get rid of Zelensky and neo-Nazis as soon as possible. This is the message they send. The forms are different, the methods and words they use are different, people are different also. But the message is always the same. Check this out. I quote Maria Zakharova. As you know, in Ukraine, starting this year, the celebration of Orthodox Christmas was moved from January 7th to January 25th, solely for political reasons to be closer to Europe. Actually, people who believe in God celebrate religious holidays to be closer to God, and only in Ukraine Christmas is celebrated in order to be closer to Europe. They're trying to deprive Ukrainians and their children the main symbol of the new year. Now, Dead Maros has been declared an enemy. He is sometimes represented as a relic of the Soviet past than almost as an agent of the Kremlin. The European interpretation of this image, Santa Claus, is persistently being imposed on young Ukrainians and their parents. Therefore, on the threshold of 2024, we would like to wish Ukrainians to get rid of the neo-Nazis who have been settled in Kyiv as soon as possible, who, in order to please their Western masters, turn the country into scorched land, depriving people people of historical memories and hope for a better future. And yet, despite the heresy and lies spread by Zelensky and his regime, nothing will prevent people from celebrating New Year and Christmas there. If at this point you are asking yourself, how can I help this channel? That's super easy. Please hit the like button or you can buy me a tea like this or coffee at buymeacoffee.com or become channel's patron at patreon.com. Either way would be fantastic and much appreciated. The links are down below. Thank you so much. Now watch this.
I quote Maria Zakharova again. On November 24, the government of Ukraine submitted to its parliament a draft law on amendments to certain laws of Ukraine regarding the rights of national minorities, communities in certain areas. Recall that the requirement to bring Ukrainian legislation into line with European standards uh, in field of protection of the rights of national minorities was put forward to Kyiv by the European Commission mission as one of the main conditions for the start of the negotiations in the European Union membership. What is supposed to happen? It's supposed to adjust, in parentheses, a number of laws regarding language policy in Ukraine. The law on the state language, full, general, secondary education, higher education and national minorities. This is aimed at expanding the rights and scope of the official languages of the European Union countries. And what for Russian language, which is a means of natural communication for millions of citizens of this country? Within five years after the end of the war, the provisions of the law on national minorities will not apply to Russian language. Education in Russian will continue to be prohibited. There is nothing that distinguishes those steps by the European Union and the Kiev regime from the actions of the Nazis to change humanity in their own image. This bill vividly highlights the neo-Nazi nature of the Kiev regime. The changes being made are linguistic segregation and outright mockery of the citizens of Ukraine. Russian is not the language of a national minority. In addition to ethnic Russians in Ukraine, it is spoken by Ukrainians, Belarusians, Armenians, Jews and representatives of many other nationalities. Where is the entire international community? Everyone is silent. I mean, the representatives of the European Union, the OSCE, are silent. Or it would be faster for them to convert people in Ukraine, turn them into slaves. Or let's watch this. A Russian propagandist at Solovyov Live is upset about Ukrainian government mobilizing more Ukrainians, tightening the mobilization law. Молчат три головы хуторского змея Горыныча, ступит Дрэгона, Зеленский, Ермак и Умеров. Такой биджиз от могилизации. Нечего им сказать громадянам, действительно, а что здесь скажешь? В Киеве блокпосты. A Russian propagandist upset about mobilization in Ukraine, but he's not upset about mobilization in Russia. And the messages, they are very similar. Now, there is something very wrong with this picture. Russian propaganda and politicians have been acting as if Ukraine and Ukrainian people are their responsibility. As if Ukraine is part of Russia, but somehow the evil West has installed Zelensky temporarily and he's destroying Ukraine and its economy. The West has installed them to get rid of the Russian culture, get rid of Russian language. And it's Zelensky's Nazis, the Kiev regime, criminal unconstitutional regime, doing that. And Russia have been acting as if Ukraine is their business. You see, this is a very easy situation to catch Russian propaganda red-handed. One should ask a simple question. Why do you care? Why do you care what's going on inside Ukraine? Why do you care who Zelensky is? Even if he were Nazi and a Western puppet, he is not. But even if he were, why would Russians care? The Ukrainians want to change the street names? Why do you care? They want to get rid of old Soviet monuments in Ukraine? Uh, de Sovietis, uh, you know, de, de, make it uh, no Soviet anymore. It's their decision, it's their choice. Who do you think you are to scold them for that? If Ukrainians want to forbid Russian language, why would Russian officials care? It's the business of Ukrainians. As a country, they can speak any language they want to. And they can certainly create any law, any law they feel is needed for their country. If Ukrainians choose to speak Martian, what business does Maria Zakharova and the likes, you know, have to do with it? 
If Ukrainians want to celebrate Christmas on December 25th instead of January 6th, Russian officials, who do you think you are to scold them for that? Who do you think you are to say no to that? If Ukrainians are getting financial aid from other countries, Russian officials, who do you think you are to blame them for that? If Ukrainian government signs a treaty with another country, who do you think you are to interfere? Vladimir Zelensky was elected in fair presidential elections. He defeated the incumbent president Pyotr Poroshenko. Zelensky won by a landslide. People of Ukraine trusted, have trusted Vladimir Zelensky to lead them into the future. Vladimir Putin himself confirmed the legitimacy of Vladimir Zelensky as a president. Russian President Vladimir Putin during uh, St. Petersburg International Economic Forum in 2019 called the new leader of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, a good actor. Putin stressed that experience and knowledge are needed for public affairs. The Russian leader clarified that he decided not to congratulate Zelensky on his elections to the presidency because of his unfriendly rhetoric. He still continues certain rhetoric, calls, uh, calling us enemies, aggressors, he must somehow decide who he wants, what he wants to achieve. The Russian president expressed hope that one day he would get to know his Ukrainian counterpart. You see, Putin did not say, oh, Zelensky is a neo-Nazi and unconstitutional president. No, he admitted Zelensky was elected in a fair election. He was legit. Ooh, wasn't um, the regime and it wasn't criminal. But very legitimate back then, huh? Zelensky can be good or can be bad president. But that is a strict matter of Ukrainians. And the Russians have no business whatsoever commenting, let alone judging or even interfering. And yet, Russian propaganda and officials have been acting as if Ukraine belongs to them. As if they have the ownership rights to Ukraine. As if they are to decide whose president, government, and policies would be in Ukraine. They act as if Ukrainian people do not exist. On the other hand, it's not news. Inside Russia, they also act as if Russian people do not exist. And I must admit, I have to say that I'm um, very sad to say that Russian people don't disappoint them. So... Why no one, and I mean no one in Russia, is asking this question? Why do you care what's going on in Ukraine? Why instead they aren't asking these questions? What the fuck is going on in Russia? Why there are food lines back? Why the prices for everything are skyrocketing? Why Russian roads are in such poor shape? Why officials are so corrupt? Why Russian ruble is in the top three worst performing currencies in the world. Why? Why the retired folks can barely afford food? And questions like that. After all, that's what Russian officials are paid to do. To make lives of regular Russians better through applying right policies. And if they fail, they must be fired and replaced immediately. I have not heard questions like that that asked in Russia, not once. Moreover, when I ask people why they aren't asking these questions, they look at me like I'm crazy. The answer is usually, nothing depends on me. What can I do? And then they sigh. <sighs> Just like that. Remember, earlier I said that the attacks are unbelievably clumsy and even dumb. It happens because the attackers aren't held responsible by anyone in Russia. People simply don't realize that they are the owners of Russia. Russian officials, including propaganda people, including the president, everyone, are acting like they are, like they are acting because we are the people are letting them act that way, but not asking any questions and not demanding answers. Russians have no clue that it's their land. They are the masters of Russia and their own lives for that matter. No one can even try to tell them. They cannot speak freely. They should dress in a certain way. They can't assemble and protest, can't decide laws that govern their lives. 
and everything like that. Russian people simply don't understand that they are voters and taxpayers. And that's the highest position you can be in any country, anywhere, any, anywhere in the world, not just in Russia. They are absolutely clueless and they're very scared. They're scared to ask these questions, even to think that, I think. And you know what? For as long as they don't realize that, nothing will change in Russia. The government will continue controlling everyone and the empire will be trying to grow. The changes in Russia must come from within. The video of documenting how I was fleeing Russia, the link is right here. Thank you.